Alleluia! Christ is risen! The Lord is risen indeed! Alleluia! Well, happy second Sunday of Easter and welcome to our lesson. I am so glad that you are here. Well, at the beginning of every lesson, we like to gather things and people. So today, the things that you could gather um, are things that remind you of Easter again, if you still have those around the house. And people, if you could gather your friends and family to come join you so that you can wander in these lessons together, I'd like you to do that right now. Magic! You guys are back and you always come back and I have been enjoying uh, seeing you guys in these lessons. Well, I can't see you, but you've been texting me and talking with me and I've, I'm so grateful that you are watching these lessons and that we can have our circle bigger and bigger each week. Well, this lesson is the second Sunday of Easter as we celebrate this mystery of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. So let's look at our calendar. Last week, I forgot to move the dial just a little bit, so sorry about that, but we are on, last week was the first Sunday of Easter, Resurrection Day, and here we are moving the dial to the second Sunday of Easter. And Easter is such a big celebration and such a great mystery that we need all of these weeks to, to celebrate. It's such a big celebration. And Pentecost is such a big mystery as well and celebration that we need this whole time, seven weeks, to get ready for Pentecost. Let's light our candle. I almost said let's light our calendar. Let's light our candle and remember that Christ is the King. Christ, our King, we welcome you here today. We thank you for your life, your death, and your resurrection and your ascension. Thank you for sending the Holy Spirit to be with us. We thank you for your presence in our life. We thank you for taking upon, for you taking upon all of our sins so that we can be forgiven and we can live in holiness and new life with you. Amen. Well, let's get our hearts ready for this lesson. And we are going to say three times the mystery of faith, which is Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We're going to settle into this lesson and get our hearts ready to receive what God has for us today. So take some big deep breaths and get all the wiggles out. Mm. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Lord, thank you that you are so powerful and great. Um, we cannot understand everything about you, but we thank you for helping us to understand a little bit. We thank you for inviting us into your presence to be with you. We thank you for your love for us. Amen. Mm. Well, today's lesson is part of our lectionary at church. It comes from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. This lesson happens the day of the resurrection, and it also happens the week after, and that's this week. So we remember when Jesus died, he was put in the tomb. The stone was rolled away. There were those that came to the tomb. Some of them saw an angel 
or multiple angels. One of them heard Jesus' voice. She recognized his voice and she saw Jesus risen. Others saw Jesus as he walked with them on the road to Emmaus. They didn't understand who he was until they reached their home. And Jesus took bread, broke it, and gave thanks. And then he was revealed in the breaking of the bread. Later that day on Easter, Jesus came and saw some of the disciples in the upper room. The room was locked. The disciples were fearful of the Jews. They didn't know what could happen to them. And Jesus came in somehow into a locked room. The disciples were overjoyed. They were so happy to see Jesus. He conquered death. Jesus was happy to see them too. And he said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And then he breathed on his disciples and he said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive others, they are forgiven. And if you do not forgive, they are not forgiven. Wow, what an experience with Jesus they had that Easter evening. Well, that day, Thomas, the disciple, was not there. But when he did show up, the disciples were so excited. They said, Thomas, we have seen Jesus. He is alive. And Thomas said, I can't believe that unless I myself, unless I see his hands and I touch his side where the spear went, I will not believe. Hmm. A week had gone by. It was the next week. And they were still in this upper room together gathered. They still didn't know what to do. Many people had seen Jesus. Thomas still had not. And they were to wait, wait for the Holy Spirit. And that night, again in a locked room, Jesus came. He came through this locked room and he was in their presence. Thomas was there this time. Jesus was there. Hmm. Jesus said, peace be with you. Thomas, look, look at my hand. Place your finger here, touch my hand. Look at my side, touch my side. Stop doubting and believe. And Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. Jesus told Thomas, because you have seen me, you believe, but blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Now, Jesus did many other miracles and saw the disciples and others in many other ways. And the gospel of St. John, the writer of John, said that he did these so that we would believe. And there were many other things that he did not record in his gospel. But he recorded them 
so that we would believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing in his name, that we may have life in him. And this is our lesson for today. Let me read this in the Bible. I'm reading from the NIV, from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas called Didymus the twin. One of the twelve was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe it. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands? Reach out your hand. Put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. What a powerful, powerful story. And I do have a lot to wonder about with this story. I wonder how the disciples felt when Thomas came and they told Thomas that they had seen Jesus. And then Thomas wouldn't believe. I wonder what the disciples felt when Thomas said he wouldn't believe. And I wonder why Thomas couldn't or wouldn't believe his friends that he had known for the past three years at least. Hmm. And I wonder what it would have felt like to have Jesus come into a room with the doors locked. And when Jesus came that second time, I wonder what Thomas was thinking when he first saw Jesus. Before Jesus had said anything, he didn't say, peace be with you yet. But that first impression, what Thomas was thinking when he first saw Jesus. And I wonder if Jesus knew what Thomas was thinking in that moment. I wonder 
what is hard for you to believe or understand about God? And I wonder why sometimes for some people it's hard to sit in the mystery of Easter, of the resurrection. That mystery of faith that Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. I wonder what Jesus really meant when he said, blessed are those who have not seen, but yet believe. I also, I wonder where you have seen breathing in the Holy Scriptures, where else you have seen breath coming on people in the Scriptures and what that reminds you of. Remember at the beginning of the story when Jesus breathed on the disciples to receive the Holy Spirit. And I wonder what God is telling us about himself in this whole story today. And finally, I wonder where God is working in your lives today. Remember, he is working in your lives every day. Well, again, speaking of work, we have work this week to do. So I have put some songs in the description box below, maybe some songs about what you can do for your work this week. Perhaps you can color or draw a picture of this. Um, in my family, we always like to do food work. Food work is so much fun. And so today I have this bagel and I'm wondering if you can think about what this bagel might have to do with this lesson. Well, first of all, I have a special kind of bagel and I got Thomas's bagels. Now, let me say this video is not sponsored by Thomas's bagels. <laughs> But I got Thomas's bagels because they remind me of doubting Thomas. So we have Thomas's bagels today. But there's one other thing beyond the Thomas's bagel. And it reminds me of when Thomas put his fingers in Jesus' side and in his hands. So maybe this week you can have some bagels or maybe donuts that remind you of Jesus, um, the wounds in Jesus' hands and his feet and his side. You know, another thing that, that we can do for work this week is maybe say the creed or learn the creed if you have not learned. We have the Nicene Creed, the Apostles' Creed, and the Athanasian Creed. And here in my catechism, I have the Apostles' Creed. And those, and, well, I have all three, they're all three in here. But the thing is about the creed is that sometimes when we have doubts, Sometimes when our faith maybe isn't strong or we are trying to figure out what we believe in, it's really important. We can look at the creeds to help us get, have faith, to help us stay on track with our faith. So I am going to read the Apostles' Creed. It's different than the one we read in church. The one we read in church is the Nicene Creed. 
but I'm going to read the Apostles' Creed today. And it is so powerful when we read it together because we stand together in faith. And so sometimes when people are having a hard time in faith, just going to church, just going to church and standing there around all the people that are saying the creed can un un uplift that person, can uplift you and can uplift me, knowing that we can stand together saying this creed of faith together. So let's go ahead and read the Apostles' Creed. I'll put it on the screen for you right now. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Reciting the creed can help strengthen our faith, and being with other Christians can also help strengthen our faith as we uplift one another and remind one another that Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again, that God loves you so much that he died for you, he has forgiven your sins, he loves you. Well, I think that we have a lot of work that we can do this week, so let's exchange this light and remember that Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Take a big, deep breath and blow. And as we see the smoke rise, we remember that our prayers go up to the Lord like incense. Before we leave, we are going to say the collect for the week that is the prayer that we say all week long, starting on Sunday. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal Mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever, Amen. And may you go now in peace to love and serve the Lord and love and serve one another. May you go now to share your strong faith with others. May you go now knowing that God loves you very much. Bye.